All right, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify old painting so you can get better faster. All right, I'm painting this uh, lifeguard stand on the beach here. It's actually Siesta Key Beach uh, in Sarasota, Florida. And I'm just starting out here on a plain uh, white oil primed uh, linen canvas. Uh, if you want to know where I got this canvas, you know, where I get all my supplies, actually, I got links in the uh, descriptions of all my videos to the supplies I use. And the supplies I use is not the, uh, you know, it's not going to be this top of the line, extremely expensive, break your budget uh, materials. It's going to be, but it's also not going to be, you know, like this, you know, cheap, worthless, not worth buying materials. They're going to be what I feel like is the best bang for your buck. Uh, it's good to practice on. It's also good, you know, if you do practice and you do a painting that you really like and you want it to be a finished piece, you know, you, you didn't do it on some material that's not going to hold up. So uh, I feel like a lot of painters out there, a lot of people on YouTube don't really talk about that, you know, about materials that they use to practice on that are still good quality. Uh, a lot of times they're just kind of showcasing their commissions or their final products on materials that you know, cost more than your rent. So, yep, the taking out the side of the tower there. See, that's the good thing. You know, I'm using cadmium red and just some paint thinner here, and you can wipe that off with a rag uh, pretty easily on this old prime linen. Uh, you, you know, if you're using canvas, you might have to just dip your uh, paper towel, or your rag, or whatever, in the mineral spirits or paint thinner, and it should wipe off. Uh, pretty easily you know you still see like a little smudge there don't worry about that you know we're going to be painting over all this anyway uh you know don't worry about stray marks here with the drawing it's it's just focus on the the big shapes that's what we're focusing on here is just the big shapes and not you know little details drawing's really important it's very very important with uh painting and don't ever lose that don't ever uh stop practicing your drawing i mean you will get better at drawing just from painting but you still want to constantly be practicing and, and the type of drawing with painting it's not so much detail and shading and all that as much as you know placing things where they need to be in the right size and the right perspectives the right angles so as i'm painting here i'm constantly i'm constantly checking things with other things within the painting you know like i got these chairs that are set up right to the left of the tower here and before i put them in i kind of see in my reference photo like where do these how far up on the uh, base of the tower does this chair go and i'll kind of line it up uh, with that so just be constantly looking at things you know where things line up how much higher is, is you know this cloud than you know the top of the tower how far up do these flags go above the clouds into the sky you know which i know where to put the top of the flagpole uh and also just be willing to you know wipe it off constantly be stepping back and checking uh you know everything is in line everything's even uh, a little trick i like to do sometimes is i'll put little dots on the sides of my canvas where I think halfway is uh, that way you know I can look at what's halfway on my reference photo and it's just kind of a, a good um, like just base point to base things off of you know if I find the halfway point on my reference photo I see the horizon just a little bit above you know the halfway point of the photo then I can you know go to my canvas and put the horizon right just a little bit above uh, the halfway point of my canvas and then boom we got the horizon line and then now we know our horizon line is correct now we can uh you know base the next thing we draw off of the horizon line say we draw the clouds based off the horizon line and you get that correct and then you gotta you know then you can use those clouds to base where you're going to paint the tower in so it's just a lot of you know a, draw, a kind of drawing that is you know, not about the details, but just getting things accurately where they are. Also, you know, we're going to be painting over all this. So all these, you know, if you go in there drawing a lot of little details, it's, you're going to, it's going to get lost anyway under all this paint. And I didn't prime, I didn't tone my canvas. Uh, a lot of times I'll put, I'll kind of tone it a neutral color, you know, like with a brown or, you know, uh, burnt sienna, something like that, something neutral. 
Uh, but I didn't do that because I know I'm going to be doing a lot of light washes first, which is what I'm doing now with the clouds. You know, I'm using a good amount of uh, mineral spirits with my paint and a little bit of uh, linseed oil, but I'm just trying to cover the canvas right now. I'm not extremely concerned with getting the exact right color. If anything, I'm probably going to go a little darker than what I think because I can know I can always lighten it. It's harder to put like a really light color down and then put a darker color over top of it. Um, so if anything, err on the side of dark, but you want to keep the paint thin. Uh, this is where a lot of people uh, make a misstep is they put this layer on too thick and it's just really, then you're fighting that paint, the rest of the paint, and you could go try to put a lighter uh, color on top of it and it just, you know, you're fighting this dark color and it mixes in and gets muddy and, you know, it's, just no good. <laughs> now I'm putting in the the sky, and even with the sky, you know, I'm keeping it really light. I'm not I'm not making any final decisions on anything. I guess is a good way to put it. Now going to the sand. Now this sand was very very tricky. Sand is very tricky, uh, especially this sand at Siesta Key Beach because it's it's different. It's a very it's a white sand. It actually like doesn't get hot on your feet. It's pretty crazy. But there's always a rule, there's like a rule in uh, landscape painting that's your lightest plane, like you can break the landscape down in different planes. Uh, there's the sky plane, which is going to be your lightest plane. It's going to be the lightest value is your sky, followed by your uh, ground plane. It's going to be your second lightest value. Then any hills or mountains is going to be your third. And then the darkest thing is going to be any upright objects. So in this case, the tower, uh, you know, any structures, trees, stuff like that. Is going to be the darkest, but I and they they always say there's an exception with snow. Sometimes snow can be lighter than your sky, and I think they need to add an ex, another exception to that, which is the sand at Siesta Key Beach, because it I don't know I keep pushing it back. I kept you know throughout this painting you'll see I'll push it back and forth so many different ways, and it's funny because what it ends up what I ended up settling on was because I posted a photo of this painting on Reddit. And a really, um, a really good artist. I'll put a link to his uh, Instagram below. He was really nice, and he uh, gave me advice on it and said there the shadows, there there's too many like variations in the value, and it just was the the uh, the sand wasn't reading as, you know, having that sun, you know, really hitting on it, and you know, a lot of times sand can have this like blinding effect when you're out there. And he suggested I I just pull the uh, values in tighter and it worked and I really liked uh, the effect it had but you'll see the sand go through many many changes throughout this and now see with the like as I was saying with upright art uh, objects being the darkest like that's what I made my main concern is when I'm painting these masses of people and the chairs and stuff is just getting a very dark color I'm using you know ultramarine blue and uh, um, cadmium red uh, to make this you know this darkish uh, purple to have a base for these people. And with draw with uh, painting people, you know, especially crowds of people there, I think the biggest mistake people fall into is getting caught up in trying to paint every single little person and, you know, squint your eyes, you know, people even if it's a mass of people it'll they'll all get condensed in one big shape and that's what i'll do here with these people um that are just right past the stairs here is i don't worry about drawing individual people i just i squint my eyes when I'm looking at the photo i you know i just paint the shapes and the colors that i see and in the end it will it will read as a mass of people very well you see i'm still using uh pretty light washes here uh you can see like the brush strokes and everything i'm not finalizing any colors I'm you know I'm feeling it out I'm I'm kind of sneaking up on the paintings I like to talk explain how I paint like I don't you know I never just go right away and just make final you know brush strokes right away I, I put a little in here move to another spot put a little in there you know push a little more pull it there you know and I just kind of slowly but surely start working different areas and constantly comparing them until I dial everything in the way I want. 
it's easy to get discouraged early on at a painting if it doesn't look exactly the way you want it. Uh, don't let that happen. It shouldn't look the exact way you want it. And with more, pra with the more practice you get, the more you'll be able to see a painting is going to turn out in the earlier stages. Like I know right now, this painting is going to turn out is going to be successful because I've gotten this beginning stage down and everything's working. And I've done it enough times that I, I know that this will this will pan out because I've I've solved a lot of base issues already. All right, so now I'm showing my palette. I uh, I don't know how I feel about showing my palette in these videos because I feel like a lot of people, especially beginning oil painters, see people mixing color. I don't know. I just never got anything out of watching people mix mixing colors because mixing colors for me is so instinctual because I just learned the base that, you know, for the longest time I only painted with uh, ultramarine blue, cadmium red and uh, lemon yellow and white. You know, I've added some yellow ochre and some crimson and, you know, I'll add different colors every now and then. So since I started with those three basic colors, like I had to mix every single color. So I had a really good foundation of just instinctually you know, with color and I've never, I've never had any real formal training with color. I've never read any books or done any workshops on color. I'm probably really bad at talking about color because it just is instinctual for me. I can't break it down, but I think that's like one of the better ways to go about it. Cause I, th I feel like when people see someone painting and they have like their palette, it's easy to get in the mindset that mixing color is like some kind of recipe. Like, you know, like you're going to jot down like, oh, mix this color and this color to get a sky. It's like, no, like every sky is going to be different. You know, you can't, there's no set recipe for a, a sky. Uh, I mean, there are certain, there are certain thing, like certain, I guess you call them shortcuts that can get you to certain places quickly that tend to appear a lot. Like I saw one artist talk about how using ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre gets you pretty quickly to like the color of trees in the distance so it's like a pretty muted not muted but it's a it's a it's a it's a subtle green that you know is a little more on the blue side so it sits in the background it's also kind of it's desaturated a little bit so it does sit in the background fairly well uh same with like a grass green would be cerulean blue which i also have my palette i forgot i got cerulean blue at the top there which is really good for skies um Cerulean blue and, and lemon yellow get you a quick grass green because grass greens tend to be a lot lighter one because it's a ground plane and they just tend to be, uh, I think you said cooler. I don't know, but there's a lot of red in the ground. Um, but there's things like that, but I don't know. That always got to kind of confuse me and stuff. And I just like to think, I don't know, when I'm mixing colors, I, I don't think of warmer, cooler, chroma. This I just really, honestly, I'm just thinking this needs more blue or this needs more yellow or this needs more red. Uh, kind of like a printer. Um, but it just, I don't know, like, keep things simple for me. I never really think about mixing color. Like I never stop and think that much. It's just very instinctual. Uh, you also see on my palette, you know, kind of the way I mix things on my palette. I guess that's a positive of seeing my palette is kind of seeing how I mix or like where I place my pools of paint. Um, you see, I, mi I, I, I keep, I mix within other piles. Like I'll start a pile, then I'll branch off from that pile to make lighter tones of that or darker tones. You know, I'll pull from other piles that I mix. Like if I have a darker pile of some color that I mix and I need to darken the color that I'm working right now, I'll scoop out of that pile. And I feel like that adds a harmony to all your colors because you're using colors that you've mixed that are in the painting and, you know, new colors that you're going to be mixing for the painting. And I feel like that adds a good a good harmony to it. Now at this point, the paint is getting a little thicker. Um, I'm probably using a little bit of linseed oil to uh, thin out the paint, but keep the color and, and not thin it out too much. Uh, good example of constantly comparing is this tower with the clouds in the background, because it was very, it's, I feel like it'd be very easy to make it too dark, the tower too dark or make the tower too light. And because it is general it's just all in shadow but there are subtle you know color shifts when the when the within the shadow of the tower and whenever you're 
whenever something's not working, it's like, oh, like, why isn't this, you know, reading as dark as I want? Or why isn't this reading as light as I want? You know, I feel like if I go any darker, it's not going to look right. Look to what's around it. Because like with this, I had the light and the clouds behind it to make it look darker, but using a lighter blue on the tower, if that makes sense. Um, so whenever something's not working for you, don't just look at that thing. Look at what's around it, because that is influencing how you see it. So I'm adding some highlights to the top of the clouds here thing to know with clouds is a lot of times clouds are uh, cloud a lot of times pretty much all the time is uh, clouds are flatter on the bottom especially uh, cumulus cumulus cumulonimbus i don't know if that's the right town i had somebody ask a um uh i had a comment on my one of my last videos about paint or not my last video i had a, I have a uh, video on painting clouds someone recently asked how to paint cumulonimbus clouds and uh here you go um I didn't talk about it that much, but you got to see it. Uh, with cumulus clouds, it's, you know, think of them, you know, they, I know it's clouds are just, you know, it's steam or kind of say, you know, it's it's not a solid object, but think of it, it you, you got to think of it that way when you're painting it. These large, voluminous, you know, big uh, masses in the sky. Uh, so, you know, they have a shadowed side, they have a light side, you have a light source, you know, it's just like painting an apple or a still life or something, you know, the light's going to be hitting on a certain side. And the key is to, I feel like the key with clouds or the thing that a lot of people miss or mess up is they make them too uniform in many ways. When they're drawing it, like you see these clouds here, the top of the cloud line, you know, the, these little humps, a lot of people will draw those in pretty repetitively like they'll be the same height the same distance apart and each kind of you know hump within the clouds will look like the one next to it or be the same distance from each other as the last one and you know any you know uniformity in making things the same size and shape and distance and space like that's it's a big no-no in, in paint and landscape painting because there's very few things that are perfectly uniform and nature and to get that really organic look and feel you want to stay pretty random with the shapes and the colors that you're using within uh, the clouds also you'll see like i'll dab in colors of the sky like the sky that's above it i'll like when i'm mixing and painting that part of the sky i'll take some of that and dab it into the clouds because there's a lot of reflected light in clouds i should probably do a whole video on reflected light um but there are reflected light and 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 kind of splotting in some of that sky color into the clouds is going to really give it a realistic look and also the bottom of the clouds you see it kind of just fades and blends into the sky and it's kind of hard to tell exactly where the cloud starts and where the uh, sky below it starts um, that's also a big uh, a big help in just you know creating realistic uh, clouds also try not to go pure white on the highlights in your clouds especially clouds like these that are so far in the distance there's no way that you're going to have your lightest value be those clouds. I know it might look like it, but really strive not to because when you do, like if I did take pure white and make pure white highlights in the top of these clouds, it's going to bring them way too um, forward, like towards the, towards us. And I want these clouds to stay far in the background because they are far away. And you see this, this sand, it's, it's at this point I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just put lay in the dark i was laying like the darkest color the sand could be and then go in with the highlights to create all these little um you know all the little divots and footprints and everything uh by adding the highlights on top of it but ended up not really working that well see going into the uh the people here see since i have this dark color as a foundation it makes it easy to put lights over top of it to sculpt it and you know infer you know these people and since i did make that first darker layer relatively thin paint i can i can layer on thicker paint it's gonna it's gonna stay on top of it it's not gonna mix in with the darker paint uh that much and, and kind of ruin what you're trying to do See, now I'm going with the, like in the shadow of the, uh, 
tower and add in like kind of highlights within the shadow. Just give it a little more detail and and volume. And you see, like I've I've you know I've worked this tower multiple times. Like, I just keep coming back to it. You know, I, I do that with everything. Like I was just working on the people. You know, I left them, went to the tower, and I come back to the people. You know, I'm, I'm constantly moving around, uh, adjusting things. Kind of, it's it's a lot of like I, f I feel like a lot painting is a lot of like um, putting together a puzzle. You see here, I'm, I'm I'm starting a little bit to put the lights in in the sand, like I was saying earlier. But I feel like I was saying it's it's a lot like painting up. It's like putting together a puzzle, and you, you'll start working on a section. And you'll realize like, oh, I can't complete this and I ha unless I have other pieces of the puzzle. And that's kind of what I do with this is I'll work on, you know, I'll work on the people until I really don't know what to do. Then I'll go work on the tower and that will inform me like kind of what I need to do with the people. And I'll go to the sand. That'll inform me what to do with the sky. I work in the ocean, inform me what to do with, you know, whatever. And it's, you know, like now I'm back up into the sky again with these clouds, putting in a little more highlights with uh, white and uh, cad uh, lemon yellow. Because I needed to know what this sky was going to look like, how light it was going to be in the end to finalize, like, you know, how dark I needed to make my tower. So, and again, here I'm going back over the highlights that I painted in, in the sand with this dark. I really struggled with this sand. I really didn't know what to do. It's probably the biggest thing that I learned in this one was how to handle sand. They're really, really pushing the dark in the sand here. Darkening that surfboard. Like I said, upright objects, you know, in the landscape are going to be the darkest. So always, you know, pay attention to that and be aware of that. That's a really good thing to know. The whole thing I said about the lightest planes, uh, that's pretty much going to be in any, any landscape, plain air book tutorial that you pick up. But... Um, it's a good thing to know when using photos because a lot of times in photos that is it's not as apparent in photos and you have to adjust it to uh, make it right. All right, now with the sky, you know, for the longest time I felt like I always would phone in the sky kind of. I would like, oh, it's just going to get lighter as I get to the horizon and, you know, don't, don't just do that. Don't just think, oh, I can just make it lighter as I go to the horizon. You know, really, you know, it's going to get lighter to get towards the sun so you can see it does get lighter as I go towards the right where the sun is and it's different blues, you know, and it's, it's blue. It's a very green blue. You can see, cause I got the cad lemon in it and it's getting pretty yellow. And then on the left side above the tower, it's actually a pretty cool blue. And the main blues that I use are ultramarine blue, uh, and cerulean blue. And I kind of mix those, in, you know, together and play with those and blend those along with white and, uh, uh, cad lemon but it's very you know you don't want it to be too it's the sky's you really got to dial in that sky because a lot of times it will dictate everything else and there are some painters out there that will paint the sky first and then they will base everything off of that there's other painters that paint the sky last because they're worried if they paint the sky in the wrong value it's going to throw off the values for the rest of the painting it's kind of what you prefer i kind of do a little mixture i kind of just treat it like anything else and paint it along with everything else as i go I do tend to get it in quickly though. I feel like I, I, it's one of the first things that I do finish in a painting. Um, and a lot of times when I do have to like at the end change the sky a lot, it's, it, it kind of means I struggled within the painting. Favorite thing to paint on this was probably that American flag. I really liked it, really liked looks like the light shining through it and I don't know, it was just a really good really good touch I actually painted this scene uh, in a study actually on site it was it was really fun and I started it before the lifeguard got there and it's just like something's missing from this it just doesn't seem right and then the lifeguard came he put up the umbrella put up the flags put out the surfboard I'm like oh this is much better much better <laughs> so now I know when I go to paint there to get there after 9 30 and start painting See, I'm still, still, I'll still jump into that tower and add details. I've, you know, suggest the boards, you know, the planks of wood that make up the tower and, you know, pretty simply putting in the flagpoles. And now you see the chair in the foreground, 
You see I put the red in that and, and some of the yellow in that. I did that because I wanted to know how everything was working. I just wanted more of a glimpse into the finished product to make some decisions. I wanted to see how the composition and everything was working with this, you know, red, you know, pretty saturated red object, you know, in the foreground, this detail to kind of leading you in. Um, I wanted the, you know, I was like, I, I need, some, I need a little more information here about what's going on in the foreground so I can make some decisions about what's going on in the middle of the ground and background. So I did uh, paint that chair in a little bit to give myself a sense of what, you know, how it was all gonna gonna look at the end with this detailed, you know, vibrant chair in the foreground. And see, even with these highlights on the roof here, because that's like a tin roof and it's reflecting. I didn't even I didn't go to pure white. There is a little bit of uh, uh, cad lemon yellow in there. See, now I'm going like really thick with the paint for this sand. Uh, to get it uh, see I, just, I knew I couldn't get it too light I would go too light sometimes and it, it wouldn't look right and I don't know but then it wouldn't look I was trying to get that effect of you know the sun hitting it and being that you know strong blinding sand and I thought that would be done with just how light you got it but it's it wasn't it wasn't about how light I made the sand it was more about the range of values and you see like the darks in the sand is just it's it's too dark the difference between the light and the dark in the sand is too much and uh you actually won't see that until the end uh end photo of the painting also being aware of your brush strokes is pretty big uh like in the sky i like to kind of change up my brush stroke you know like direction because you know sky is you know, it's air and, and when you're, you know, you don't want it to be too uniform because that will give it a little too much structure. Um, I forget where I, I learned that, but, you know, having like a variety of different direction of paint strokes in your sky will give it kind of an airy, lighter feel uh, to it. So that's something good that you, sh you should uh, experiment with and kind of see what I'm talking about with that next time you paint a sky. And I painted this over the course of a couple days, so there are periods when it did have an opportunity to the paint to dry up a little bit. I mean, it was never dry to the touch, you know, ever. But it will, you know, it oil paint gets to this point where it kind of tacks up a little bit, and it's not so wet as much as it is uh, sticky, and it's easier to layer paint over top of that. So if there are sections where you have lighter paint or you have thicker paint, I mean, then, you know, you need to paint over top of it. It's okay to like let your um, painting sit for a day or two and let it tack up a little bit because it'll be easier to uh, paint over top of anything that you're struggling, you know, fighting paint to paint over top of. Sorry, my uh, palette went out of focus here, but you can see how I'm not very organized with my palette. I know a lot of people, a lot of artists will, you know, they'll have the dark colors on one side, the light on the other, and they'll gradually get lighter to darker. Mine is just all over the place. And I could see how that could hurt some people. I don't know. I think it might help me. Just, I mean, me in particular, just because it, I don't know, it, it, it forces me to use all these colors with each other and, and adds a good harmony to it. I also do not use black. Uh, I feel like more people don't know that than I thought. Um, try not to use black. I know that there are painters that use black. There's the Zorns palette that uses ivory black and all that stuff. But if you really want to learn color and you're you're starting out or you're you know want to get better at knowing color, don't use black because it's such a it's such an easy way to, just, to fall into traps of darkening color by just adding the black and not and kind of not really looking into what colors certain things are that are really dark like it'd be so easy for me to make this chair in the foreground just use black and 
you know, you never really learn what color these shadows are. Um, it's actually like, you know, darker purples, darker browns, darker blues, darker, you know, uh, it's, you know, you're not going to learn as much if you're just constantly relying on using black to darken things. See, now the paint I'm using is, especially with the sand, is really thick with hard, like, I don't even think I am using any linseed oil. I'm just using straight paint um, because I really want to lay it on over top of that. And like I said, I was, I was fighting. I was fighting the paint at this point. I was trying to, you know, give it that light hitting it effect. And I was trying to do that by just adding thick, bright paint. And I do have some pink in there. Uh, some pink, a little bit yellow. Uh, look for that in the ground. Like you know, there is a lot of there's a lot of red in the ground. There's a lot of red and dirt. Um, that's just a thing. To, that's almost one of those things that you you just know, and you. It's it makes you aware of it, so you can look for it and find it uh, when you're painting. I feel like a lot of landscape painting is knowing things so that you can find them uh for the longest time you know when you, people learn to paint or draw at least when i did it was you know paint what you see if it's there you see it and i never understood like these rules or awarenesses of you know there's a lot of you know things get cooler you know there's red in the ground like stuff like that and then it kind of clicked it's like oh it's it's there and kind of learning these rules I guess you could say or awarenesses will make you well aware of it and be able to find it uh, cause it's very easy you know just because you're out there painting or you're looking at a photograph doesn't mean you're going to see everything you're not going to find everything um, and I feel like that's what makes really great painters is their ability to identify things within a scene identify what's important identify what's making the scene good and making sure to get that correct you know be able to be aware of what is happening in the in the scene in the landscape and you know how to push things forward how to pull them you know or pull push them far away it's always fun to put in really really bright colors like these orange cones just little accents within the painting I think I end up getting rid of these people that are above the surfboard. They just kind of, well, those are the only two people that were that defined in the painting. Just kind of drew too much attention to them, so I ended up getting rid of it. Still going into that lifeguard stand, even even towards the end of the painting, still making adjustments, constantly making adjustments. No part of the painting is ever done. Don't ever think you're done with a section or be precious about the section not wanting to change it or thinking you're going to ruin it uh yes you can overpaint a painting um but with oils it's so easy to scrape off what you mess up and just repaint it so i'm never really worried about overpainting a painting or messing something up uh this allows me a freedom to try things to uh paint with um confidence uh, which I feel like is the best way to go about doing. Nobody wants to look at a unconfident painting. And all these umbrellas and all this beach gear is always the it's always fun to put in because you like you know you work this whole all the subtleties of all these middle values grade down values and you know and then you get to go in at the end and throw in these like bright orange bright red and white and these little areas and it just really makes this come alive and reaches a you know mass of people
All right, I think I'm going into the final touches here. And, you know, I still have this dark pathway uh, in the sand here. And that, I ended up getting rid of that. I'll show you in a final picture. I didn't film myself uh, fixing. It was a pretty quick fix. I just, you'll see, I just really lowered the dark values. And I feel like it really helped with... Uh, making it seem like the sun was really beaten down in, on the sand and, and this really bright, uh, bright sand. Right, and there it is. Uh, you see, like, I, I, you know, I guess smoothed out the values in the sand, and that was the biggest takeaway that I had from this painting and the biggest thing I learned. Uh, I live near the beach, so I'm going to be painting a lot more beach painting so I better <laughs> learn how sand works in light and shadow I uh, hope you enjoyed this painting uh, if you did please uh, or I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel uh, if you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43 I will be releasing um, another paint talk on Wednesday if you're not familiar every Wednesday I release a, uh, a series called paint talk it's kind of a a podcast I guess good thing to listen to it's just me talking it's videoed but uh, just me giving my thoughts on everything painting so you got that all every Wednesday and also be releasing more videos like this and tutorials and all that good stuff so I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting <laughs>